What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to be learning how you can use Sensu handlers to make observability data actionable. In this video, I will introduce you to the concept of Sensu handlers and we'll be configuring two types of handlers, an alert handler and a metrics handler. This lesson is intended for operators of Sensu and assumes you have already set up a local workshop environment. So if you still need to do that, go check out lesson two and get your workshop environment configured. As always, this entire lesson with code samples is available on GitHub as part of the Sensu workshop. Links are in the description. Let's get started by defining what a Sensu handler is. Handlers are actions that the Sensu backend takes using observability data as inputs. Handler configurations are one of the most important building blocks within Sensu because they determine what happens to events that flow through the Sensu pipeline. Handlers can be used to send alerts using a chat service like Slack or via emails, store observability data using a service like Sumo Logic or time series database like InfluxDB, create and resolve incidents interfacing with services such as PagerDuty, ServiceNow, or Jira, and trigger automated remediations using services like Rundeck or Ansible Tower. Sensu has several supported types of handlers, the most common of which is the pipe handler. A pipe handler can be any program that accepts event data as JSON input to standard in, even a shell script. You can even install pipe handlers packaged as Sensu assets. We'll talk about assets later, but for now, let's focus on the basics of handlers. Ready to try creating your first pipe handler to send alert messages? Let's do it. Here's the scenario. Your SRE team primarily communicates via a chat app like Slack or Mattermost. They want to receive alerts as chat messages. We'll solve this by defining a Sensu handler resource that will forward messages on to Mattermost. Because Mattermost is API compatible with Slack, we can use the Sensu Slack handler plugin to send alerts to the Mattermost service already up and running in the workshop environment. To save time, we can copy and paste a working handler definition from the online lesson plans. Let's copy the handler definition into a file called mattermost.yaml. Let's review some of the key attributes in this YAML file. The runtime assets attribute list the Sensu asset packages we'll be using. The asset identifier, Sensu slash Sensu dash Slack dash handler colon 1.4.0 instructs the backend to download the handler executables from Bonsai. We'll cover assets in more detail in a later lesson, but essentially this makes sure the executable we want to run is available on the backend. The secrets attribute lets us make use of secrets defined on the backend without having to reveal the secret values in the handler definition. In this case, the Mattermost webhook URL secret is mapped to an environment variable that we can use in the command. The command attribute is where the real work gets done. This attribute holds the needed executable call, including optional arguments. Here we'll pass the webhook URL argument via the environment variable that was created in the secrets attribute. The description template option makes use of an advanced Sensu feature called handler templating. It's using information from the Sensu event to customize the alert message text. Okay, let's create a new handler definition with Sensu Cuddle Create. We can verify it was created using the Sensu Cuddle handler list command. If you see the Mattermost handler in the output, you know that it was successfully registered. Let's leave that there for now. We'll come back to this in the next lesson and show you how to use it. Next, let's prepare a handler that can store metrics. Since it was designed to be a pipeline for observability data, but does not store the data long-term. If you want to keep a historic record of the data, a handler can be used. This kind of handler will convert the incoming event 
into the required format, then send it to the database or service for storage. In Sensu, observability data is modeled as events, but only some events contain metrics as part of their payload under the metrics property. Handlers can apply a filter to ensure they only operate on matching events. There are some built-in filters available for common use cases, or you can write your own using a JavaScript-based Sensu query expression. In this exercise, we will use the built-in filter has metrics to ensure that only events with metrics are processed by the handler. Here's the scenario. You want to store metrics flowing through the Sensu observability pipeline in a data platform like Sumo Logic, Prometheus, or InfluxDB. The solution is to use a handler and apply a filter to it so that it only processes events with metrics. Sensu has a built-in filter called HasMetrics just for this purpose. Let's start with the handler that sends metrics to Sumo Logic. This is very similar to the last exercise, but we'll be using a different handler plugin, and this time we'll be applying a filter to it. To get started, let's grab the handler definition from the online lesson plan and copy it into a file named sumologic.yaml. Here we're constructing a new handler using the Sensu Sumo Logic Handler plugin. This is using the same basic set of handler features as the last exercise, secrets, assets, and templating. The difference I want to highlight is the filter attribute. In this handler, we'll be using a Sensu built-in filter named HasMetrics. This filter will ensure that Sensu only sends events with metrics to the handler. Events without metrics attached will not be sent to this handler. We'll cover filters in more detail in the later lesson, but what's important to know here is that filters control which events get sent to handlers. Okay, let's register this metrics handler using the sensucuddle create command. And let's verify that it exists with the sensucuddle handler list command. We see that the Sumo Logic metrics handler is in the list, and that means it's ready to be used to process events. I think that's a good place to stop for now. We'll start making use of these handlers in the next lesson. Okay, let's wrap this lesson up with some discussion. In this lesson, we only scratched the surface of what handlers can do. You learned how to create a handler using a YAML file, use handler templating to format the event data, use built-in filters, referencing runtime assets installed from Bonsai, and view a list of running handler configurations. Great, but where do handlers run exactly? Handlers are part of the process stage of the observability pipeline. This means all of this happens on the Sensu backend running the handlers in the same place where agents and checks send their observability data. And because Sensu is API-based, we are able to create the handlers remotely, using Sensu Cuddle to push the desired configurations to the backend via the handler API. We use a monitoring as code workflow authoring the handler configurations with YAML files, using the Sensu Cuddle command as the API client. We didn't need to send any executable code, environment variables, or secrets along with this configuration. This means you can safely store the YAML files in a Git repo without exposing any sensitive data. The handler executables are stored as assets in Bonsai or your own private asset server, and the secrets are stored in Vault. The Sensu backend will automatically download them as needed. All of this works together to allow you to quickly add, remove, or change handler configurations. In a live system at any time, without the need to redeploy or restart the service. I only showed you examples of single handlers in this lesson, but it's also possible to find handler sets, listing multiple handlers, each with their own filters. Handler sets let you create very expressive escalation policies mixing remediation, incident management, and notification together by defining different conditions for each action as handler filters, want to only notify an on-call human after hours, after auto-remediation has tried and failed to solve the problem? Sensu handler sets let you express exactly this sort of policy. 
The handler executables we used in this lesson were developed using the Sensu plugin SDK and have built-in support for templating using the Golang text template package. This can be used to merge observability data directly into the output, providing meaningful context and more actionable alerts. The SDK also has the ability to override handler configuration using event metadata. So you can have handlers take entity or check specific actions instead of the default. Here's an example of a check annotated with an override that would redirect messages to the ops channel, but only for events generated from this check. There are a lot of handlers already available on Bonsai, but if you find yourself needing to write a new one, you might consider using the plugin SDK to author it. It has a number of useful features just like this one to make life easier. We also have a handler template repository you can clone to get a jumpstart on this code. Okay, I think that's more than enough to think about for now. You can learn more about handlers from the detailed handler reference in the Sensu docs. In the next lesson, we'll cover the Sensu event data model in more detail and start putting these handlers to work. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or stop by our discourse forums to chat about all things Sensu. See you in the next video. Doodle model. Okay. I'm so intent. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Red Bull. Agreed. Right, 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 right. Uh, uh, easy there, killer. Damn you, Easter Bunny. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Okay. Uh, monitor configuration. Start over. I need to get through it now. Yeah, yeah. How dare you, sir? How dare you, sir? One more. I think we're going to be good here. Wow. <laughs> wow. And done.